Um, so this talk will be held by Colin. He is a researcher at um, System Security at the North Esther University. He has a huge interest in um, security in mobile and embedded application. And as far as I can tell from the description, you are going to tell us about a new way to investigate on Android application uh, running on the Dalvix virtual machine, right? Yeah, so thank you, Colin. Yeah, thank, thank you for the introduction and good, after, good afternoon, everybody. So, um, yeah, this talk will be about um, dynamic uh, instrumentation of Dalvik applications on Android or any other platform that runs uh, the Dalvik VM. So, a little bit about me I'm a postdoc in, in, at the Northeastern University in Boston. I do yeah, mobile phone stuff, a lot of different mobile phone stuff, as you can see. I'm also one of the authors of this fine book, which will hopefully be released next year in April. So, Android application security is pretty interesting for various reasons. Maybe you want to find vulnerabilities, analyze malware. Maybe you just want to reverse, an engineer, uh, reverse engineer an application to see what it's doing. And finally, want to maybe attack an application, attack the OS. And Currently, uh, people were like just like really disassembling um, uh, yeah, Dalvi code, looking at like the Smiley output, or run an application in an emulator or a sandbox and look at the traces, the execution traces or network traces, or maybe uh, do some static instrumentation, so adding some code to an application. But this talk is really about dynamic instrumentation. So at, at the runtime, uh, like during runtime, and we're not going to really look at bytecode, so you don't need to worry that you have to like, know about Dalvik bytecode or anything. Uh, it's a much cleaner, easier way to do instrumentation. Um, of course, I was not the only one who was like, investigating that, so the Cydia substrate framework for Android also has the same capabilities, but it's really super complex, um, and parts of the source code, as I know, are not, not available. And also, there's the exposed framework, but this is more like designed for doing like OS mods. And my framework is really it's small, it's built for security, it's really easy to understand and to use, and it's really designed to like integrate it into your own application. And of course, it's, really going, it's released in full source code. So right now, people are doing static instrumentation, so they would take an APK, uh, uh, um, unpack it, which like is the, uh, converting the manifest file back to plain text and so on. Of course, there are nice tools for that. And then it would like this. You would look at the disassembly of, of the DEX files. And then you would add, uh, modify or add your own code to the Smiley code and then repackage, compile, sign. And then you would uh, install it, run it. And then you would hope it would work because maybe your patch code has some bugs or there's some tiny self-integrity check and then maybe you have to like, repeat and repeat this process in order to do uh, some instrumentation. That's what people are using, used to do. So what is dynamic instrumentation? So it's really about changing and modifying applications during runtime. So you can, it's basically a technique that allows you to remove, uh, to add and remove code and hooks on the fly. This is a, the dynamic instrumentation has been around for a number of years. But this like, talk is really about Dalvik instrumentation. And you can do like, very simple instrumentation, you just like, hook um, library calls of standard libraries, and then you can really easily see already what an application is doing with the system. Of course, if you want to do application or target-specific uh, instrumentation, you still need to disassemble um, the target application to actually find the points you want to instrument and hook. What are like, some of the really basic um, advantages of doing dynamic instrumentation on Android? For the, the main advantage, or one of the main advantages is that you don't need to unpack, disassemble, modify, compile, repack. Um, you don't have to do all this, so you save a lot of time. Also, you don't need to modify the target APK. So like, really simple integrity checks um, are still um, uh, are still working. Or if you have maybe a, um, an application that is signed with, um, with higher privileges, um, like the platform signature, you, you cannot like, repackage that without like, uh, modifying or killing that signature. 
But the thing is, of course, Android applications are written in Java and they run in a virtual machine. So instrumentation is a little bit different than um, when you instrument like a native binary code. Just a quick overview. So this is uh, the, the, this Android platform picture, which everybody uh, loves and hates. And we are going to look at only this part, which basically runs everything, like all the applications in the UI you see. So small yellow box is a virtual machine, and then you have those core libraries set. This is more or less the interesting thing for us. So how does it actually uh, the Android runtime work, and how does an Android process look like? Um, of course, you have uh, the virtual machine and the core libraries. And every application or any system process on that, that executes Dalvi code looks like this. You have um, a process that links to like, the standard libraries, like libc, uh, libz, libjpg, and so on. And of course, the libdvm. That's the actual virtual machine. And then, of course, the process also contains um, the Dalvi class that it wants to execute. And really, every application, like if you install, um, I don't know, Facebook or something, that basically works like this. And also, the system processes like Zygote or the system server, which execute the framework, they work in the same way. So let's start with, uh, with looking at the instrumentation. So the basic idea, really, of the instrumentation is we convert a Dalvik method to a native method, more specific to a JNI, to a Java native uh, interface call. This is how we get um, control of the execution. And from there, we can call the, from once we uh, execute in the GNI call, we call back um, to, the, to the framework, um, and we can call the original function we just took. So we can just create a really easy inline hook. And the nice thing is, um, when our code executes in JNI, we are in the land of C, so all the Java protections, like pr private, protected, and so on, they don't exist for us. So we can access anything in, the, uh, in that VM, which is really, really handy if you want to do instrumentation. So I will give you a very, very brief uh, overview of uh, JNI. You really don't need to understand Jane iPhone to understand the stock, but if you want to write your own instruments later, you have to like, look into GNI. So it's basically a standardized interface to um, call nat native code from Java. And you can almost write any, any code that you can write in Java in this JNI interface, but you have to do a lot of work. And the basic signature of a, of a JNI call looks like this. You have a method name, you have a result, and you have the JNI environment. Um, and then you have a bunch of parameters. Um, yeah. And yeah, so the, the JNI interface provi uh, provides us with a bunch of functionalities, like find class, which gives you like a reference to a class. We can create new objects, and so on. It's, it's a really, really simple interface. So the actual instrumentation, how does it work? The actual instrumentation is based on injecting a shared object. So on, on Linux, this is just like a .so file into the, into the running process. And this shared object provides for some very basic native code. So t this native code um, hooks into the DVM or talks to the DVM. It resolves a bunch of methods to like resolve classes, um, and it provides the functionality to hook methods and call original methods. So this is our basic pro process again, but this time we already added our own code. So how does the hook hooking actually work? Um, first, we need to find um, the loaded classes or references to loaded classes and methods. We, we find methods, uh, classes and methods by just their fully, fully qualified class name and the method by the name and the um, uh, method signature. So this is an example for like, accessing the compare to method uh, in the string class, and it takes as an argument a string uh, and an integer. Depending on what kind of um, methods um, what kind of, if the method is a virtual method or a direct method, you have to use different calls. But this is in the library all abstracted for you. Um, so, and the main, the main idea is you resolve a class, a method, 
change some change, change some of its internal parameters to convert it back or to or to make it uh, a native class. And the most important ones are, are those. He changed the, the argument, the JNI argument info, so the, the JNI subsystem can parse the, the method arguments. And the most important one is the access flags. You just add uh, uh, OX100, um, uh, which defines this method to be a native method now. And then you have your, your piece of uh, code, which is a replacement function. So this is the function to replace the compare to function. You see the native, uh, the G, uh, JNI environment, um, the reference to the, to the object, and the parameter, the, the string object. Um, and then every call after this, oh, and then of course uh, um, the use GNI bridge. That's basically, you give it a, so with this function, we find the, 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 uh, the method descriptor, which is like returned in this like met variable, and then we just tell the, the um, DVM, hey, this method, please use this native function, Dalvik function hook, in this case, um, to, to um, execute this um, yeah, compare to function. Very simple. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, we need to um, modify a few settings of, of this method. Um, more, more specific is the, um, the register size and the argument count. Um, and depending on what kind, what kind of argument you, parse, uh, you pass to the method, you have to yeah, uh, yeah, um, give it a, 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 yeah, a number of arguments you want to pass, uh, a, a, a register size, sorry. Um, yeah, this is pretty well documented in the VM, and yeah, for example, this, uh, this uh, method takes, um, it has in size of two, because it uh, takes one object um, as a parameter, and of course, um, it's uh, not a static uh, method, so it has also uh, this value, or like uh, um, an instance, uh, instance parameter. Um, and then, once your code executed, um, you want, of course, to call the original functionality in order to like, not break, um, break um, the application. Of course, in some cases, you might not want to call the original functionality, but this part then we already covered. And to do this, you basically have to look up the method and the class again, revert the parameters, so all the parameters, like the register size, you have to store then you revert it, and then you just like use one of the um, JNI functionalities in this call int method, pass the arguments back, and you get the original function to execute. This sounds, of course, like very complicated and cumbersome. You don't want to like write this by hand for every method. So I created this like really nice, easy to use um, uh, lib Dalvik hook library. And what you basically do, you say, okay, I want to set up a hook. You pass it the name of the class, the method name, the method signature, the size of the registers, and a function pointer, which is a function should hook. And then you just call hook, and that's it. From then on, um, this function will be used whenever this method in this class is being executed. And of course, we also have like a functionality to um, call the original function. So you just have to call the pre this prepare call, use this call something method um, from the JNI interface. You get the result, and then you just like reinstall your hook. Since we're doing an inline hook, we always have to do this prepare call um, um, post call um, structure. But in the end effect, you will have like three lines of code every time. And if you simply just want to unhook something, you just call the prepare statement and then um, in the library, uh, I think there's, I put in a macro which basically is uh, unhook. So very, very easy to use. Okay, but how do we actually um, install a hook into the system or into an application? For this, I created um, this hijack tool, which is basically a, a port and some enhancements of a very simple Linux shared library injector. Um, and the steps you have to do after you create your library, you, pu you push the li library to a data local temp, 
if you want to also load additional DEX classes, which I'm going to tell you about in a few minutes, you also have to change the Stalvik cache directory to be worldwide writable. And then you, you also use the hijack tool, um, provides the PID of the target process and the full pass to the library, and then you just run it, and that injects the library into the running process. And it really works for any um, Dalvik-based process on an Android system, so for your normal application, but also for Zygote and system servers. So you can do modifications deep down um, in the core framework on, on your running device. Um, yeah. So, but sometimes you don't. You want to uh, instrument applications very early, maybe before startup, um, in order to like see really everything what the application is doing. And in order to do this, we actually have to um, instrument or trace a zygote, and we have to do that because. Can you actually read that? Probably not. Um, anyway, so um, zygote is like the base VM process on the system. So every time, every time. You like start a new application, like hit some icon on, on the application launcher. The activity manager sends a, no, a message to Zygote, and Zygote like forks a new process and specializes to that by loading um, the specific classes. Um, and then like you have a new process that like runs your application. And in order to um, hijack or inject your own code um, during that startup pr process. Instead of um, tracing or instead of binding to the PID of the target process, which doesn't exist at that time, we just supply the PID of Zygote, um, give again the pass to the library, and add the uh, this uh, yeah, string, which is the, the full class name of um, the application. That has to like match to the to the app, to the main to the main activity that that is launched. Um, yeah, which is very easy. So normally, when you start the process for the first time, you can just like run ps, and then you see the class name, or you have to look in the manifest file. And yeah, so you just um, yeah, run this command. Then you can either manually press uh, on on the button to launch your target application, and before the actual application code is executed, um, the library is injected in the, into the process, and um, you can start instrumenting. Yeah, so some, some special features. So you also actually, for this, you also have to add the minus uh, Z switch. And then, yeah, the S is really just the full class name. If you do stuff on like really old Android devices, you also have to add the minus M switch to disable uh, calling of M protect. Um, and then you can like get some more output from the hijack tool by just adding more debug level. So. Let's take a look at how actually the instrumentation um, code flow works. Um, so we have some application and some method in it. If we like hook it, um, the application will go down and your hook will be executed. And yeah, your hook might or might not then go down and call the original function and then apparently uh, at some point return the, the um, the execution back to the main application. So very, very simple. And if you just want to like look at what an application is doing, you can build like a very simple proxy, which is really, yeah, call, take the parameters, maybe log them, um, call the original function, and return. So, so with this technique, you can already do um, some, some lightweight monitoring and reversing. So maybe you have an application where I've had, which is like somehow obfuscated. Maybe there is like some string encryption or maybe some reflection to do more obfuscation. And um, yeah, so I created a small, a small tool or a small demo library, which is called String Monitor, where I just um, hook into various um, string classes, like string buffer, two string comparison functions are always interesting because um, applications might yeah, use that. that's like control flow changing um, um, uh, operations. And that's like the interesting points uh, in the application. And then of other like there are a bunch of string classes, and then of course like get method, which is like used uh, in part of reflection. So you can see actually what methods are being used. Very very simple demo. 
Um, yeah, I have something later on that too. Um, we can just continue, and if you say, hey, if you don't call the original code, um, you can also do, like, do some other stuff. And one very interesting thing for me was to like, just disable dig um, digital signature verification. And this is like really used for all kinds of different things. And this is like a really, really easy hack. You can just take this um, Java um, signature verify method, overwrite it, replace it with this like one line, two line of C code, which just returns one. And if you, if you load it into the application, that application will think all, all the signature it, it's, it's going to check um, are valid. And yeah, you can, you can do amazing uh, things already with that capability. So these are where, like, these two things where you just, like, either monitor stuff or, like, really disable some checks. It's like, that's just only the beginning. If you want to do more sophisticated instrumentation stuff, you already, oh, of course, want to, like, write more code. And writing all this, like, uh, code that interacts with Android application in the Android framework, you really want to do that in Java. Um, and don't want to, like, write everything in C, G, and I. Um, so I, I added small functionality, which just like loads an additional um, class into into the into the pr uh, into the process. And actually, all this functionality again was available in the DVM, and just like added like some some nice wrappers around it. Um, um, so what you basically can do, you can just write your 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 your, uh, your Android code in Java, compile it. With like even just like Eclipse, and then you can just like take your your classes.dex file, and throw it onto the device, um, and then you can just load it. You have to like just yeah give it the dex file, and of course tell the the um, the DVM which class to load from that dex file. Um, yeah, and when we when we want to load additional classes, the the flow of the of the application or the flow of the instrumentation looks like that. And the first step, we have the benign process. And, this, and, this, and the second step, we load um, our native code, which then like, calls to the DVM and can hook stuff. And this code can also um, load a class um, um, and call methods of this class. So the, the lower side, we have like, our own classes, which has our like, instrumentation code in it. Um, yeah, and the loaded classes can just be used like any other class. Um, they also can load additional things. The only like complication so far, if you want to use inner classes in your um, in your instrumentation class, you have to define and like add one line of um, of class loading for each of those inner classes. Um, yeah, one thing to load additional classes, you have to um, yeah make the starter Dalvik cache directly write, write, writable. Uh, and in order to update your Dalvik code, you have to um, or you inject the Dalvik code, you have to um, delete the cached version from this directory at each time. So while you're developing your instrumentation, you have to always make sure to really delete this file, because otherwise you will only loading your 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 old version. And with this. We come to the yeah, instrumentation code flow version two. So from the hook, we now can load an application, uh, load, a, yeah, uh, lo load um, a class into our application or like, into our target process, and then call uh, methods uh, in which are like written in Java that perform instrumentation or utility for your for your instrumentation. So now we have code that's running in, inside the target application, either native code or Java code, but we really want to interact with the target application and, of course, the Android framework. But in order to access uh, or to interact with the application, you really need access to the application's objects, so to the class instances. And there are a couple of methods you can use for that. For example, like methods or parameter scraping. So you can just hook um, a method in the process that gets, like for example, um, a context parameter passed in, like Android content context. And then we can just take the, um, the instance or the pointer 
um, to that class instance and you and pass it along to our to our um, instrumentation framework, which then can, for example, send intents in the system, and so on. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, yeah. You can also access fields. Um, so what you um, if you know like the the name of a field or like a, yeah a part like a a class field, you can just like find the class, get the field ID, and then just read it. Very, also very simple. Yeah, and there is like more stuff you can do. You can also, if you like only have access to an inner class, you can easily get the a pointer or a reference to the outer class, which is like this generated um, 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 uh, variable, uh, this, um, the this value, uh, zero, uh, dollar zero, which just like points to the, to the outer class. Just multiple methods to like get um, pointers to the to the class. Yeah. But yeah, there is. Um, if you if you don't like need to have like very specific um, um, ways to, uh, or if your code basically runs on a UI thread, you can also just like use this um, activity thread, and you can just like get from from this activity thread, you can just like get. Um, a pointer to an application um, context very easily. So it really depends on where you instrument, how your instrumentation code looks, um, if you're running in the right thread, and so on. So what what did we do with this so far? Um, for like a, a paper uh, uh, earlier this year, um, we. Yeah, we wanted to um, change the, uh, the local SMS routing on an Android phone, and for the paper, we like took the um, took the um, the Android uh, source code and modified it and then compiled it. And of course, it's like very tedious, and you don't want to like do this all the time. So at a later point, um, I just took my framework and um, re-implemented that, and we really we hooked um, this com Android internal telephony. The SMS dispatcher. So this is the method that is called when every time an SMS comes into your system. And the and the nice part is this, with this instrumentation, you can just um, yeah instead of recompiling everything, you build your instrumentation framework. You can save a lot of time, and you can build your tool uh, or your instrumentation library once, and then deploy it on like five different Android devices, which maybe um, run on based on different source. So it's really a, a huge time saver, even for like stuff that's not directly um, um, yeah, security related. If you just want to like prototype software, prototype X, um, OS extensions, and so on. Yeah, and whenever you like dig around other applications and maybe um, want to look at classes, um, like how, what are the methods, what are the method parameters, what are the internal um, uh, values, uh, um, variables, and so on. You can use um, like some functionality from the DVM, this class dumping, and just like say, hey, what what's actually inside this class? And again, I just for uh, for an example, I just use the string class. You can see all the different methods. Of course, I retracted something just because the slide is very big. So you can just kind of look very easy look inside. Um, how the classes are, lo are looking like, and then from from this you can very easily just like copy paste um, the the parameter list or the signature uh, into your instrumentation code. Yeah. So now we can we know how to modify uh, applications, uh, and but can we also um, modify stuff globally? Um, yeah, and of course we can modify, modify stuff globally if we just inject our modification into the zygote process. This modification um, gets distributed to every application that is started uh, or forked off from zygote after we, uh, we added the instrumentation. Um, yeah, or yeah. We can also inject stuff into the system server, which like runs part of the framework. So if you want to do a modification deep down in the framework, um, yeah, you just push your instrumentation to the system server. 
So one thing you can do is like, hey, let's disable signature checking on the device um, globally. Then you can just like do um, inject like our um, verifier that always returns uh, one into Zygote, and then like basically signature verification is like gone everywhere in the whole system until you, of course, reboot. But there are like many other applications where you like want to do like global instrumentation. Okay, so I showed you like, some very basic stuff, but of course you're not here to only like say like, hey, we can like print out what string functions are called. So um, yeah, we yeah for for proof of concept we um, we built a, a nice little attack, um, and let's look into that. So I guess everybody who has like an Android device knows about this in application billing. You can so you can not only buy applications, but you can also download free applications in the application. You can just like buy like coins or like remove the ads or convert it to a full version. And yeah, Google takes this their 30% and they say, oh yeah, we make a lot of money of it, so a lot of people apparently use it. And if you look at this, it's like, yeah, this is quite some money you can spend on just like buying some cones in, in, a, in a stupid game. So how does this thing actually work? So you have your, your own application on the left, and then you have your, your, the Android market. And there is basically just like a, a, an, an IPC mechanism where you can like request billing, uh, and then like Google will take a request, send it to the backend server, sign it, send it back to you. And then the application says, oh, you, yeah, the user paid. Um, now you get like your thing in the application. And then you have a bunch of extra stuff. The, yeah, some applications like, will use like a backend server, and they actually should use a backend server, as you will see in a second. So the goal was, hey, can we, can we trick um, uh, this payment thing, uh, the, the payment, um, to actually get free content, unlock full versions, get some coins. Um, and of course, um, people have done that. People have modified the application, for example, um, to like just skip the payment and just give you whatever like, you're, you're, you're selecting in the buy screen. Or you can very invasively like, modify the, the market application, but this breaks a lot. And of course, every time something updates, all the stuff has to be redone. And you don't really don't want to like screw with the market application of your device. Um, yeah. So what do, what do we use? Of course, we use our dynamic instrumentation tool. And the nice thing you can build is this attack, which you can start and stop on demand. So if you say, okay, I want to play this game, I want to get some coins, we just like start it, play the game, and then after which can, we can like really stop it. And the nice thing is we never actually have to look at how an application works. Um, the attack is completely transparent uh, towards the application. So if the application is updated, we don't even care. Of course, if like, there are really, really specific changes in the market API, of course, then you have to adapt. But really, the key point is, um, yeah, you don't have to touch individual applications to attack them. You install your tool, and everything that uses that IPA, API is owned. So now we're coming back to the signature verification. So because normally after something is bought, you get uh, some information um, which is signed by, by Google. And in your application, you check, hey, is this thing si is this, is a, a signature um, good? And if it's good, you say, OK, this item is bought. Um, let's, uh, yeah, here you can have it. Um, so yeah, of course, we can just overwrite that, and then the signature part is gone. And then we just have to instrument some uh, API here, which is basically only one call. So instrument this one call in this application, or in the market application, and bing, you get free stuff. And everybody likes a good demo, but I only have a video. So. It's only four minutes. Um, so let's start this application first. For the ones who don't know how um, the payment works, just a quick run through to the payment. I guess best everybody knows this game. So let's get some stuff. So, so of course, we want to buy something. 
And you see, okay, by this, it says, okay, this is, would be $5 normally, so okay, let's, let's not buy it. And as you can see, you can also pay not only via credit card, but also via your phone bill. Um, yeah, so there are like a lot of different nice um, payment options. Yeah. It's just like to show uh, a, bunch of, a bunch of games and how much they ch uh, charge. 30 bucks, yeah. So. Okay, let's... Let's start our tool. Of course, for all the instrumentation stuff, you need to have like root on your device. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, this is a yeah a very old version, so it has some there's still some shell scripts involved. So now let's go back to the game and see what's happening. Let's, let's try the expensive one, since it's probably free now. 20 bucks, now we go back and you see, oh, oops. Because it's so nice, let's just try also the cheap one, and there you go. More coins added. Okay. Let's buy something here. Okay, so, so far yeah, this was like pre-installed application, so I could have like modified something. So let's like, I will download something directly from the market and right from the like market screen we can start the application. You will see it's also applying there. So we don't really, there's no like reverse engineering modifying of the applications. I, yeah, let's go to the market. Good. Let's install this thing. Let's see if we can. Yeah. Okay. The, f the screen will flip because of the specific game. It's like not the perfect choice, but. So let's get some coins. You can see. Let's go back. You have to go back multiple times because you need to get back to the game. And cha -ching. Yeah. So, freshly installed from the market. So. <laughs> so, and I'm already almost at the end. Um, so, dynamic instrumentation uh, of Android, of the Android runtime, really allows to like, modify applications in the framework in memory. You don't break any signatures. It's really, your instrumentation tools are really portable across devices. The GNI trick is actually super stable because it's not a hack. That's just like how the GNI interface on Android works. So far, we can only replace uh, complete functions, so we don't like modify uh, bytecode yet. Actually, I'm, I'm working on this a little bit as a side project. Yeah, and, and I think you can, you can like, should be able to like steer up the whole like Android application security scene a little bit, because all the obfuscation and the use of reflection is kind of useless. Um, 
because um, during runtime, everything is there at the time you want to use it. And if you can just like hook in, you can see and modify all the stuff. Yeah, at our uh, lab, we have um, various um, projects where like students are like using that to like do other interesting things. So there should be some more upcoming fun things. And of course, the whole framework um, is open source and released. Um, you can just like go to my GitHub page and, and download everything. Um, yeah, including the injection tools, examples for the like the string monitoring, um, for hooking the SMS dispatcher, but of course no no source for this Google Play attack, because um, you don't want to um, yeah take away like the, the money from all the developers who like spent hours to like write software. This is like purely to show like the powerful um, possibilities you have with this framework. And also, we use the framework to like do good stuff. So we wrote a, um, a, a third-party patching framework for Android. So if you have an old device and you don't get updates anymore, no security patches, you can, um, yeah, yeah, install um, our patches. And we have like a, a demo version um, on rekey.io. If anybody remembers like this ma master key series of bugs. Yeah, there is a patch of that for that you can directly install. And I am through. I would thank you everybody for listening. I think we have time for questions, do we? Yeah. Yeah, let's go. A question for microphone number four, sorry. Colin. Here. Ah. Have you checked uh, your software against <coughs> sorry antivirus software? Uh, no, not yet. Um, okay. You mean like instrumenting antivirus software or? Well, no. Well, well, uh, antivirus software uh, well claims that your software is uh, not good software. I, I've, I know I, we haven't released any of the instrumentation tools directly, so that's just really the tools is like really to for yourself to like build tools and then distribute them. I didn't, I know, I don't have like a, a tool like in the store which I can check against it. Okay. So. Um, yeah, number one. Um, so recently there has this Android runtime been introduced, which is, um, as I understood it, they, they compile the, the stuff now to a more low level code and execute it natively. Yeah, um, have, do you have any research in, in the RT, in the Android runtime, which is now rolli ro rolling out, or is it yeah. really only Dalvik VM? So, because you only talked about Dalvik now, and oh, yeah. I guess ART is the future, so what so about So I haven't looked into the ART stuff yet, um, but ART basically just is ahead of time compilation, so they compile the yeah. Dalvik code to native code. I think last year I did a talk about like how to instrument native code on Android, so you could use that. But if you just like want to get um, stuff out of the out of like some application, you can still just change between Dalvik and Art. And and as a resource vehicle, which just like tools mostly are, um, you can just like not switch to Art for now and use that. But yeah, I haven't looked into Art at all. But a good point. Thanks. Thanks, Colin, for the nice talk. Uh, is there any difference between hooking some custom code to, to a normal app or a, and a background service? Or oh. oh, no, no. So you can just hook any, like if, if there is a service, if a service is running in its own process or like inside another process, you can, you can hook everything. So I also, we hook the, the system framework, so just like system underscore server process or, yeah, you basically can, so far, we didn't have any problems um, to hook something. Just have to, sometimes you really have to be careful with like threading, of course, because um, if your code executes in the wrong in the wrong, the wrong thread, um, yeah, you will crash it probably. But so far, we could like um, in place hooks like everywhere. Especially like the string monitoring stuff is very simple, and you can just like really just like install it in any or in, inject it into any application and. I have one more question. When you want to hook something uh, system-wide, you need to hook it on a Zigote process. So, so is there any check, self-check in the Zigote process that it has some uh, 
changed uh, uh, execution flow or something in it or not? Oh, so far, there is nothing, nothing like that. Of course, if you have like um, one of the re like newer devices with like uh, SE Linux and everything, you have to do switch off a lot of like system system security settings in order to like use the instrumentation or to even like run code with uh, root privileges. Um, but I, my, my code works under the, uh, the prefix that you rooted your device and have uh, full control um, because, of course, if the system prevents you from um, uh, working with other processes. And the library injection works uh, via ptrace, so if ptrace is disabled, of course, you cannot do the injection. So, so will, your, will your code work on Android KitKat 4.4 because it's a bit hard to get a root? If you, yeah, of course, you need, it should work on any device that runs Dalvik when you have root privileges. So the, I'm, I'm not like really in the business of like rooting, rooting phones. There are like a lot of other people which like, yeah, have made that their primary hobby, uh, but it's not mine. Thank you. Um, there is also a question from the Signal Angel, I see. Yeah. Regarding the backend server so for the in-app <laughs> payment, there is the question. What are the pros and cons to use one? Um, so if you don't use a backend for your own application for payment, uh, then you can, your application can be with like an attack similar to ours. You can like get everything for free. Basically what you have to do, you have to take the, the, the signature or the signed data you get from the, the, the Play, Play Store application and send that to your backend server, do the signature verification there, and send the answer back. Because now you could also still modify the application to check, to like disable the, the, like the signature uh, or, or the response, like fake a, a positive response from the server. But from, for that, you have to like disassemble the application, understand how the application works, and that's way more work. So without a backend server, without doing the, the signature check off device, um, yeah, you you're really um, make yourself, uh, make yourself um, very vulnerable to attacks like that. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. Thank you very much, Colin.